All right, so what do England do with their fly half and their 12 position? That is the big talking point that everyone's going on about in the wake of the defeat to Scotland on Saturday. And so that's what I'll get into right here. Uh, thank you very much for watching. I'm Tim, this is Egg Chasers. And if you're new to the channel, and we are getting, well, I'm getting new viewers all the time, uh, loads of people brought in by the Six Nations may not be familiar with this. Thank you very much uh, for watching. I really appreciate it. Uh, hit subscribe, hit like and share. And thank you for helping to spread the channel because uh, it's just me. And I just want to reach as many fellow rugby fans as possible. So with that in mind, get stuck into the comments and tell me what you think about this uh, constant topic of conversation with England that is the situation with the fly half and the inside centre because, um, yeah, it, it, it continues. The, the debate about these two, let me get out of the way. Smith and Farrell, and particularly what England do with the 12 position. I think that's probably more of the topic of conversation. I think, for the most part, England fans don't mind which one of those is wearing 10, but they quite like the idea of someone else wearing 12. So what exactly is going on here? This has only been made more of an issue because Dan Kelly is now out of the Six Nations overall. Um, so Steve Borthwick's got even fewer options. But I think there's some really interesting stuff we can get into. And the first thing I've done, as you can see, is just get a list of all of the players that play in the Premiership for the 11 currently uh, Premiership clubs. And I've, I've gone with, if everyone was fit, who would be the first choice starters for each of those clubs and you may disagree I may have missed a name in which case leave a comment let me know which ones I missed and there's a few more on the right hand column that are just other English qualified players that, that may come into the reckoning or may be relevant to mention so I think that's pretty much a, a fair reflection of what's going on and quite a few of these what 26 players are actually in the current England squad in the case of Elliot Daly and Dan Kelly uh, they're both injured and out, but as for Ollie Lawrence, Henry Slade, Joe March and Manu Tuolangi, they're in the England squad currently, right now. Now let's take out the players that, that Steve Borthwick has not got access to, players that are, are not eligible because they play for other nations, Cam Redpath and Semi Randrandra and Chris Harris and the like. Let's get rid of them for a second. These are the English qualified players that are available to Steve Borthwick from the Premiership. And I am only limit limiting it to players that are kind of the first choice in their position. There may be other fringe players, but let's be honest, if you can't hold down a first choice position for your Premiership club when there's 11 clubs, you can't expect to be first choice for your national team when it's meant to be the best of the best. So I've limited it to these players. These are the English qualified players that are either first choice or close to it at their clubs. Now, a bunch of those these guys are injured and not available right now. Oli Devoto's been injured for a long time. Mark Atkinson's had a long-term injury. Will Joseph currently out. I think Fraser Dingwall is, is he's suspended. Anyway, the players that are unavailable, right there. These, so here we go. These are the centres that Steve Borthwick has to pick from. I suddenly realise, okay, there's some names there. You take Dan Kelly and Elliot Daly out and there's a bit of a hole there and there's not, not that many. And which one of those players are you thinking, we've well, got to get him in, get him in the 12 shirt? Because look, Look in the column of 12. There's there's only three players there. And Manu Tuolangi, for most of his career, has been a 13. It's only more recently that he's been playing regularly in the 12 shirt. But putting that to one side, let's, let's just remove the players that have never played 12 and keep any player that could or has at some point played 12. And there we go. Guy Porter for Leicester has played 12. Henry Slade has played 12. Ollie Lawrence, the same. Lazowski and Northmore, the same. So these are the players that have played... 12 either for their club or internationally and there isn't many that aren't known quantities Luke North Northmore's been in and around the England squad but he's not first choice at Harlequins Guy Porter's been around the England squad more as a 13 Alex Lazowski the same so Piers O'Connor is he the answer then with Dan Kelly out do you want should we do, do we give him the England 12 shirt I thought he might have been the solution a few years ago I'm, I'm not so sure now Manu Tuolangi, give him the 12 shirt. Maybe he might be the best option. So I think, point being, it starts to build the picture that it isn't clear and obvious what you do. And this is why when you ask 100 different rugby fans, they'll, they'll give you like the, the, the choice of what you should do and what the combination should be of 10, 12, 13 for England will be so massively spread because it's not clear. Because the choices Steve Balthwick actually has, and Eddie Jones had before him, and Stuart Lancaster had before him, were not that great. And that's because England have a particular issue at 12. So what is going on there? Well, maybe the Premiership is not helping the national team. And let me explain. Let's look at Ireland. Now, Ireland, uh, the IRFU, have involvement in the provinces. They fund the provinces, so they make decisions 
on the provinces, they have strings attached to the money that they give them. One of them is you can't just have whatever foreign players you want, unlike in the Premiership, where Harlequin said, we'll get ourselves a big South African in Andre Esterhazen. Perfectly fine to do that. Why not? Semi Randrandra at Bristol, a centre, fantastic player. In Ireland, the four provinces cannot just do that whenever they want. As you can see, Robbie Henshaw, first choice, when fit for Leinster, Bundyaki for Connacht, Stuart McCloskey at Ulster, Malachi Fekatoa got brought in at Munster to replace Damian Diolande. Now, the IRFU, the way they work, is if Munster have an inside centre that's, that's not Irish, if Leinster wanted to sign a, a non-Irish inside centre, the IRFU would say, no, you, you can't, because we've already got one at Munster, so no. And that benefits the national team. This is the the way that the system operates. I'm not saying England necessarily go for this, but it just it just I think it's an interesting and very relevant point to make. And of course, at Leinster currently, Robbie Henshaw is out injured, and because they don't have and they're not allowed to have non-Irish players, that's opened up a spot and given exposure for Jamie Osborne, who has now had top level top club level exposure around international players. Suddenly he's in the Irish squad and may get some time during this Six Nations. At um, In the case of Malachi Fekatoa, where they have allowed Munster to have a foreign um, inside centre, he is there as a really experienced, high-quality individual to offer some experience for a guy in um, Jack Crowley who they're very excited about as a potential player to convert to a 12. He plays 10, he plays fullback, but he's been playing this season, getting game time for Munster in that 12 shirt. And Malachi Fekatoa will be a big part of helping that. Again, the Irish system is geared towards success at national team level. So that when Robbie Henshaw, one of the best 12s in the world, is out of the Six Nations injured, uh, Andy Farrell is not thinking, oh my goodness, who do I have? Like Steve Borthwick is. Andy Farrell is thinking, which one of my options do I pick? And he went with Stuart McCloskey at the weekend. But it could have been Bundyaki. It could have been Jamie Osborne. Jack Crowley may end up being a, a contender. And that just shows you how the, the system helps the national team. And in the case of the Premiership, maybe the system holds the national team back. But what is it about that 12 position particularly that England finds so difficult? Well, I mentioned Robbie Henshaw already. But here's some of the other best 12s in the world. And what do they have in their skill set? Damien Dialande for South Africa, Geordie Barrett for New Zealand, Julian Dante for France and Sione Tuipilotti for Scotland. Well, these are all big men, strong men, who can truck it up over the game line when it's needed. And at international level, that is absolutely a part of the game. But they have much more than that. Because England have some of those players. Ollie Lawrence could do that. Uh, Manu Tuolangi can do that. We don't have many of those type, but we have, we have some. Mark Atkinson could do that. In fact, Mark Atkinson might be the most like one of these players because what these guys also have are soft skills, distribution skills, handling, subtlety in the way they play a kicking game in the case of Geordie Barrett, brilliant breakdown work in the case of Julian Dante. These are all round players. So what is going on? Because this is the type of player England do not produce. And it's not just now. This is a, a, an issue that's stretched back for years, players like Will Greenwood are, are few and far between. Although well, that was just a more of a balance between T Greenwood and Tyndall. T Greenwood had the distribution and running skills and Tyndall could truck it up. They were a great combination. But there's very few English players, when you look back down the years, that had both and have both. And that's the issue we have now, which is why you end up having to make a choice between do we go for two Alangi and just smash it up? Or do we go for someone like Farrell with distribution skills or put a 13 out of position in 12 and hope that that works with Henry Slade, which would probably be my choice, by the way. But but what is going on? And um, Phil on, on the podcast made a great point. And um, if you're new to this YouTube channel, yeah, this is just me here. I'm Tim, but I, I'm for the last, what, nearly 10 years, I've been doing a podcast with a couple of mates, um, mates from rugby. And that's called Egg Chasers as well. And if you haven't checked that out, you really should. It's wherever you get your podcasts. Go and hit subscribe and listen there. And Phil made a fantastic point where he said the culture of English rugby has always been geared around physicality in the forwards. Particularly England have always had good fly halves and wingers and fullbacks and outside centres, loads of outside centres. Forwards, everything's geared around 
uh, physicality and brute force and it has been traditionally. That is changing, but it has been traditionally. I wouldn't mind betting in the case of every one of these players who are big men that at one point they played in the forwards in countries where soft skills and distribution was as important for forwards as it was for backs. That is not the case in England. I'd say it's also not the case in Scotland or hasn't been. And, you know, you've seen Scotland have had to go to um, get South Africans and is uh, Sione Tuipilotu Tongan um, by origin. They've had to get those players in as project players to fill those kind of roles. England, there is an issue in those type of players. And um, yeah, I wouldn't mind betting these guys were forwards at one point when they were younger and they developed the skills enough to be able to transfer to that very difficult to fill position of 12 where you need to be big, strong and skillful. And there's a couple of players that Phil on the podcast pointed out that had they grown up in another country, may well have been prime candidates for being a 12. And can you imagine Sam Simmons or Ben Earl as a 12? Because physically, they have got the attributes, they've got the speed, they've got the um, they've got the size and strength, but they're not so big that they're automatically international back row forwards. Where you know Peter Steph de Toy, Charles Olivon, international back row forwards are generally massive. These guys have managed to get to that level in spite of their size rather than because of it. And these two are two great examples of guys that maybe in another country that that where uh, distribution skills and handling of forwards was made more of a an important attribute, they may have been international inside centres. Maybe in France or New Zealand Australia, these guys at the age of 17, 18 may have been converted from back row to 12 in the way that players have been converted from back row to hooker. That happens a lot in English rugby. Back row to hooker happens a lot. Back row to the backs doesn't happen. And is it because of the emphasis that English rugby has always put on physicality over skills and the type of rugby that, that we play as a result? I think there's definitely something in that. But what do we do now? Well, in terms of a project player, and maybe this is thinking beyond the World Cup this September, October, although I still think it could potentially be an issue, a solution by then, but one player I would like to see converted to 12 um, is Tommy Freeman. I think that is a guy that has... Uh, he's, he's, he's a big unit. He's got brilliant distribution skills. I think if Tommy Freeman were Australian, if Tommy Freeman were a New Zealander... I think they would be looking at him in the 12 position when they look at the makeup of the England team and the England squad right now. And I, I think he's someone who could absolutely do a job there. But as for what to do in the current situation, well, as for this weekend, um, I've just got a feeling Steve Borthwick's going to go Smith and Farrell again. I actually don't think it was the biggest of England's problems. I don't think it was great, but I don't think it was the biggest of England's problems. I'd prefer to see Farrell at 10. Um, with Dan Kelly out, I think he may go Smith and Farrell again. If I were, if I were picking, I think I'd put Henry Slade at 12. Either way, you're going to have a player out of position. Ollie Lawrence at 12 is slightly out of position. Um, Henry Slade and Joe Marchant, I remember them playing centre when Manu Tuolangi went off injured against South Africa two years ago, and they played really well together. And so that would probably be my choice uh, for this weekend against Italy. But there's going to be many more conversations to be had about that in the meantime. But I'd, I'd love to know what you think about the, the general like thesis there, about the, the inside centre position, whether there's any merit in what we're talking about. As this might be an English rugby issue culturally, as much as in terms of personnel. Maybe one food for thought anyway. Let me know what you think. Leave your comments. I'll see you on the next video.